today's ministration is uh, uh, repentance that brings about eternal life. Praise the Lord. The repentance that leads to eternal life. Father Lord, we thank you. Ancient of days, we give you praise. We give you the glory, honor, and adoration. We thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you for your kindness. Blessed be to your holy name. Thank you for always being there for us. Thank you for always being mindful of us that you are not, your plan is not for everyone to perish but to live. And we are thanking you for that grace. It is a grace that everyone that are willing can tap into. Thank you for remembering us. Thank you for counting us worthy to partake in this as well in Jesus' glorious name. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And um, my... My ministration of today is going to be based on, on Acts 2, Acts chapter 2, verse 38. Acts 2, chapter 38. Where's the resource? Act two, the book of Act two. Act two. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Act two. Someone to to open the book of Act chapter two, and then someone to open the book of Act chapter eleven, Act verse eight. Mm -hmm. Act two. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Act two thirty eight and Act eleven. Mm -hmm. Should I read? Yes, please. King James Version. Yes, that's fine. That's fine. And Peter said unto them, And Peter said unto them, Repent. Repent. And be baptized. And be baptized. Every one of you. Every one of you. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. For the remission of sins. For the remission of sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. It is very important for us to understand um, this area very well. Um, Apostle Paul, let us understand, who Apostle, I mean, um, uh, Apostle Paul was talking about Peter here. Peter being the, the uh, among the disciples that were one-on-one -on -one with our Lord Jesus Christ, that have seen all, knows all, felt all, that our Lord God felt and also brought to us on the surface of the planet, was talking about Peter. And Peter said to them, repent and be baptized, every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ, not in another person's name, not in the name of any anything at all, in the name of Jesus Christ. We, we thank God for releasing um, our Lord Jesus Christ to come to the surface of the earth to wipe away or to come and fellowship with us to show us the way and wipe away all our sins. But the gift has been given to everyone. That is one thing I want you to understand here. The key word, uh, the repentance and, I mean, repent and be baptized. Every one of you, that is everyone, not leaving anyone behind, every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, which means for us to be forgiven, we need to first of all repent. Forgiveness without repentance doesn't happen. There is no forgiveness without repentance. That is a key. There has to be a repentance before forgiveness. It is, it is, this is, uh, uh, this is, this, uh, is spread across the, 
the, the universe, have, have spread across the, the lifestyles of mankind, that even when someone offends you, you cannot say that, oh, you are forgiven. Just like that. You have to see a genuine repentance in that person, that this person is not going to do that thing again. You say, oh, don't worry. I know it was just a mistake. Normally, you wouldn't do something like that. You know that kind of person. You say, oh, I, because the person show a remorse. But if the person um, um, offended you and still boasting in it, then you, can, you, you will see that the person is, I mean, so was not remorse about uh, um, if if the person was not remorse about this uh, what the offense they already committed you yourself your spirit within you would not allow you to say that you are forgiving that person let us be true to ourselves but if you can see a genuine repentance and remorse in that person even the person not begging for repentance, for forgiveness, your soul and your spirit will let go. Your soul and your spirit will forgive that person. That is the way our God wants us to operate on the surface of, of planet. And that also was incorporated in our teaching of prayers. For your prayers to be answered, you have to learn how to forgive. But forgiveness does not come without seeing a repentance, a true repentance. God demanded a true repentance, which brings about the forgiveness of your sin. And you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. So it is not only, it is not only you forgiving, and it is not only you re repenting, but look at the greater price the greater price of it is you obtaining the holy spirit okay some people will say that oh then what is holy spirit then how how is holy spirit oh uh, working in my life the greatest gift that you could ever receive in life is the holy spirit because jesus christ said that we should not worry he said I i'm going to the father but i will beg the father to send down Holy Spirit, the comforter. Holy Spirit is meant to comfort you in all areas. When your heart is so heavy, when you reach to Holy Spirit, your heart becomes lighter. It directs you. It gives you opportunity. It gives you second chance, the way out. Number one thing he tells you, Holy Spirit will instruct you. Number one thing, you have reached out to him because it has been given to you as a as as you are already practicing repentance as you are discovering all your mistakes and your errors and you have the heart of repentance the power of the holy spirit grows more in you and you are able to depend and rely on him all the time and he will direct you and as he's directing you he's directing you to favor god or that you be favored by God, rather. Praise the Lord. That you will not be condemned totally. Praise the Lord. So let us hold on to that. What the power of the, what the power of the Holy Spirit will do for us as a result of our repentance. So in the book of Acts chapter 11, the book of Acts chapter 11, this is the wonderful thing that I want to share with you. The book of Acts chapter 11, verse 18. Is that when they heard these things, they fell silent and they glorified God, saying, Then to the Gentiles, also God has granted repentance that leads to life. Your repentance is what leads you to eternal life. Hello. Praise the Lord. Your repentance is the one or is the key that brings you to the level of eternal life. So the category now that you might be thinking that, oh, uh, this is only for the 
for the ancient Israel or for the Jews. No, it is not. Look at it. It says, then to the Gentiles, then to the Gentiles. We all know the Gentiles. Who are the Gentiles? We all know that. We don't want to go back into that because we are not baby Christian here. Um, so it has also been extended to us. We the Gentiles. That we also we partake in as much we are fulfilling all the righteousness, repenting of all our sins, it has also been granted unto us repentance that leads to eternal life. Praise the Lord. For everyone will be judged according to their deeds, according to their works. Whether eternal life to hell or eternal life to heaven. Everyone are going to. Eternal life is something that is, that some people doesn't say it that, they thought that oh, eternal life is only for the, for the believers. No, 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 no. Eternal life is not only for the believers, brethren. I'm going to shock people today with the ministration a little bit. Eternal life is not for, for the believers or the Christians, or the one that are Muslims. No, no, no. Contrary to the belief of many people, eternal life is open to everyone, for every mankind. Eternal life is paramount. When we, when we step up or we move to another, another life, people, that is when we pass on, people think that that is the end. No, no, no. It is just the beginning of the journey of that eternal life. But where are you spending your eternal life? That is what matters. Some people have eternal life to spend in hell, brethren. Let me clarify it right now. And some have eternal life to spend in heaven. But eternal life has been given to all mankind. Praise the Lord. Let everyone think that, oh, um, uh, well, eternal life is only for we, we that we are Christian. No, 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 no. It's not only for we that we are Christian. It has been what given to everyone. But the key to go to hell or to heaven is your repentance that brings you the forgiveness of all your atrocity, your sins, your transgressions. Praise the Lord. But glory be to the Lord Almighty that has given us his only begotten son, the lamp of God that carries away the sins of the whole world. Every of our sins are laid upon him. Even without him, without him committing any sin, he was given the utmost what punishment, the chastisement, and and he, the, his wound heal us. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Remember one thing. That is one thing that I, I want you to understand. Praise the Lord. The Lord is not slow to fulfill his promise as some count it slow as a slowness or as uh, some like oh why everyone is getting or uh, or uh, uh getting everything or going scot-free with the atrocity that they are doing no god want he knows that he has given all of us that eternal life and he wants to give us the opportunity not to use them in hell. It is real, brethren. But is patient towards you, not wishing that any should perish, but that all should reach what? To reach that repentance. So for us to reach that repentance, the Bible telling us that God himself knows that it is another journey to, to, to yearn for, hello, to get to that eternal life, 
or the stage of repentance is not instantaneous. It is a gradual process. So don't let anybody fool you that, oh, it is, it, it, you, you just, it just come to you just like that. You have to have that mindset. You have to now process it. Remember, last week, we, when, we are, when we are reading the book of Leviticus, when we are concluding the book of Leviticus, and then we, that was in the book of Leviticus, chapter 27, praise the Lord, the book of Leviticus chapter 27, that not only the commandment to be what? To be listed, to be adhered to, but also to perform them, praise the Lord. The key is what? To perform all the commandments, and the status, so walk in my status and obey the commandment. And above all, perform them. You performing them, it is it shows that it from the time of old, God has always been telling his people that look, what I am telling you, I know that it is not something that you can achieve instantaneously but you being mindful of it will give you a personal relationship with me such that your eternal life can be guaranteed praise the lord praise the lord you cannot say that oh it is only some people that are going to hence you don't have the right to condemn anybody. Are you listening now? You don't have the right to impose. You don't have the right to impose. Everybody has to judge. Everybody has to, it is everybody's cross. You have to carry your cross. We cannot impose on you whether this is what where we are to let the good news come to you. The good news came to, to them in the Old Testament as well. Praise the Lord. The good news came to them in the Old Testament as well. Even before the time, during our father, Adam and Eve. Praise the Lord. So therefore, it is, a, it is something that you need to work hard. You need to work hard. Anything you identify, that, oh, this thing is wrong. You try to abstain from it. You are, you are what? You are walking your eternal life gradually that leads to your life in heaven and not eternal life in hell. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. According to the, according to the book of Acts 17, say the the times of ignorance God overlooked. But now he commands all people everywhere to repent. It is a commandment of God. Repentance. It is a commandment of God. It is a directive instruction from God, not from any man. Those that are going to worship me are going to worship me in truth and in spirit, says the Lord. There is no way you can worship him in truth and in spirit without repentance. You cannot be committing atrocity, not obeying the commandment of God, and you expect God to bring you into that repentance. Praise the Lord. Acts 17, verse 30. Acts 17, verse 30. That the times of ignorance, God do overlook. But God has sent his only begotten son to you and I to enlighten us, to show us the way to eternal life. It is something that we all should cherish. Are you getting me? Something that all of us should cherish. 
and also in the book of Second Chronicle, which I've always been saying, this is this has always been in all my ministration. You will, you will hear me quoting this because I just want everyone to make heaven. And I'm telling you that it is not that I myself I am holier than thou, and or anybody should claim to be more holy than anybody. But we are work in progress. The moment you take that step that you want to move away from all the wayward ways, you've already stepped into repentance because God knows that it is a walk, it is a walking process. It's something that you have to work it out. You have to figure it out. You have to, you have to decide within yourself that I don't want to be of Satan anymore. I want to be of God. He will not force you. He will not, he will not, he will not cajole you in any way. He doesn't do that. Praise the Lord. Our God doesn't do that. And I will show you in the second, in the second Chronicles chapter seven, verse 14. And it reads, if my people who are called by my name, look at it. God is now saying this with, I mean, for someone to express himself this way, it means that the situation of mankind has gotten to a certain worries or level of worries in, in his system. He said, if only if my people, if my people who are called by my name, humble themselves, Second Chronicle, nah, 7, verse 14. Yeah? Are we all there? Yeah. yeah. If my people who are called by my name Humble themselves, number one. We have to humble ourselves. There is no proud person that the, if pride has covered the face of that person, they will not be able to repent. Repentance does not just come like that. That is what God is. He said, if you are, if you are made up your mind to repent your ways, number one key, is for you to first of all, humble yourself. How do you humble yourself? For you to first of all, realize that is what I'm doing right? Is God, is this what God will have expected me to do? Where I am now, is this where God will have expected me to be? The decision I am making now, is it a, a genuine decision that Jesus Christ will have expected me to take that decision. Everything that you want to do, let the love of Christ be your motivation that, oh, I love, I love Jesus to the level that I wouldn't want him to find me. I wouldn't want him to find me in a situation whereby in a situation whereby I wouldn't want a, I wouldn't want a situation whereby Jesus Christ would say, oh, why did my son or my daughter engage him or herself in such situation or in such in, in that at all? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. God loves us so much that he gave his only begotten son. Praise the Lord. That he gave us his only begotten son is to show us the way to repentance that leads to eternal life. There is no point you and I coming together without us making heaven. There is no point for anyone that wake up on Sunday or Saturday that they are using or taking as their Sabbath and be going to a church or synagogue to say they are going to commune with God with their hands full of evil, full of blood, full of... So the repentance has not set in. Although God will be condoning that step that you going into the synagogue or you joining the congregation of his people, somehow the Holy Spirit we change your heart or the, the, the spirit of God will minister to you and you will 
you will do this. Look, you will do this. This is what is going to happen. He said, if my people who are called by my name humble themselves and pray and seek my face. Number one, you humble yourself. Number two, you pray. So that is the essence of you communing with the Christians, communing in the, in the synagogues, everyone. I'm not leaving anyone behind. From the Sodom and Gomorrah people up to the killers, to the to 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 committing adultery or, or idol worshiper to to any level whatsoever, coming to the presence of God, it says there will be a time if you are already taking that step of humbleness, and then you are praying. Next, which does not necessarily mean that you are seeking the face of God, or you might be thinking that you are seeking the face of God, but you, are, you haven't got to that level. But God is saying that, and if you can come to that level and turn from your wicked, wicked ways, what are the wicked ways? That is, all these, all these evil doings, killing human beings, shedding innocent blood, taking bribe or suppressing one another in one way or the other, doing evil to one another. Um, they are all sins that God did not overlook. But because of, because of a work in progress of repentance, he overlooked some of them. According to the book of Acts 17, say, the time of ignorance, the time of ignorance. God counts those time as time of ignorance. Come and look now. But, but now he commands all people everywhere, everywhere to repent. You have been commanded to repent. But in the process of you now turning from your wicked ways, he said, then this is what I will do. You know, we've identified three key things here. First, number one, hum humbleness. Number two, prayer. Number three, seeking the face of God. Number four, actually it's four. Five. Number four now, turning. Turning, that is doing a U-turn. So God did not say that there is, there is a specific time that you can turn. You can turn anytime. Hello? You can turn anytime. But don't say that you've already know the writing because it sees your heart. You cannot deceive God. You cannot say that, oh God, wait for me. Let me, let me kill everybody, then I will come and change. No, it doesn't, it doesn't work that way. You cannot say that, oh, let me do all the fornication in the whole world, then when I am retired, then I will now seek God. Seriously, he sees your heart. No, 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 no. That one is already out of the categories of people that God is talking here. Oh, I will do according to my lust. Now some people are turning their own lust, trying to impose it on others by making them to accept them. Why would they accept you if what you are doing is right in the first place? I don't understand. There is no, God is, God has commanded you to repent. Said God has acknowledged that through your lost, according to the Sodom and Gomorrah people, through their loss, God left them into their loss so that they can be a, a condemned person, a children of perdition. God left them. Or is it those that are so wicked that they are, the money of the people that they're supposed to use to run the country, they are embezzling it, they are keeping it in their, in their, in their water closet, they are, they are putting it in their rooms while others are suffering. And every weekend, every weekend, you will go and lavish the money. You go and play gamble in the casino and people, you are driving by them and you can see the sufferings they are going through. The youth, the young people are walking aimlessly on the street and you, you are in the position because you are making money. You said you are making money. You sat down on the authority 
to command electricity to move the country forward. That is to empower the people to, to, to have continuous electricity, all the infrastructures that will benefit life. You sat down on it, or those of you that you are supporting them because you are gaining one thing or the other. God sees you as well because those are the wicked ways that God is talking about in the book, in, in the second Chronicles, chapter 7, verse 14. He said, If they can turn from their wicked ways, he said, Then I will hear from heaven. That is what is going to happen. God said, he will hear you from heaven. I pray that God will hear all of us from heaven today in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. He said, I will hear you from heaven and I will forgive their sins. And not only that, he will even go beyond forgiving your sins that brings eternal life. He will also heal your land. That is where you are you will have a comfortable life. Money does not bring you comfortable life, brethren. Right? It is not money alone that brings you comfortable life. If you want to disprove it, go to hospital. For anyone that wants to say, oh, pastor, you didn't get it right there. Um, I want to challenge you that I do. Uh, oh. I know exactly what I'm saying. Go to hospital and you go and see you go and see some millionaires that are unable to stand up on their bed. Praise the Lord. What do I say? Money fail. Everyone that are struggling and thinking that um, it is all about money. No, it is not all about money. Are you getting me? It is not all about what? It is not all about money. Remember the time that the money will fail. Hello? Remember the time that the money will fail. Okay. If it, you, somebody will be thinking that, what is this pastor saying? Uh, how can the money fail? <laughs> money do fail, my brother. My brethren. If you don't want to know, let me now ex let me just open your eyes to 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 even your time of the 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 uh, aging days. In the aging days, when the keeper of the house, that is your hand, is be become trembling, you know your arm is the keeper of the ha house. Let me tell you that biblically, your arm is the keeper of the house. When you are young, you are able to do many things. But when in the old in in the in the old age, even your money cannot you cannot you cannot put all the money on the arm in order to make it to be the keeper again. <laughs> oh, I love Bible. I love the way the Bible explains things sometimes. Hmm? Yeah, it's the book of Ecclesiastes. In the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 12, from verse 3, it says, In the day when the keepers of the house tremble, and the strong men bow down, the strong men, oh, I can do this, I can do that. Then it is that in the olden time, this is like, this is, this is um, um, like an, uh, what would I say, uh, like a metaphor that the Bible, like a, eh? a like a parable that that the that 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 the Bible is using to express some certain situation of life for us. Preventure, some people we challenge that. Oh, where does money fail? Money can buy everything. Those that are some funding money uh, abroad to their children, uh, while others, other children in front of you, you you are standing uh, by your balcony and you can see youth aimlessly not knowing what to do and you are allowing the country to degrade and to 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 be to be condemned and you said you are you are living a happy life because you are comfortable remember there's going to be a time that is what the bible is telling you here 
that the, when the keeper of the house, that is your arms, even that source of money in your old time, within a short period, it can cease, it can block. Another government will come that you will not be part of them again. Why? Because the time, it is time and season that happens to man. You get me now? And the house itself, that is the body, not capable of doing things that you want to do. The brain, the brain wants to do many things. Have you, have you, have you, have you not seen that? In fact, if you can't see anything, you will let me let me wow you about what is current in the World Cup now. In the World Cup, there are so many things that the key players like Messi and, and Ronaldo, they will their mind is telling them to do, but their body could not perform that again. I just use that as illustration. In their heydays, when the keeper of the house can still do anything, their legs are is flying like a <laughs> like a tiger, but you, it has come to a time where the body that is the 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 house the the house itself is growing old. So all this happens to all men. The strong men that is the leg bow down. Their leg cannot do what they can do again. Are you getting it? The the even the 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 grinding teeth, the grinder which is the teeth, sees, go to the dentist, give the dentist all your money to give you a new teeth. They will tell you, say, no, it's not possible. It is only a denture you can now use. <laughs> that is where money fail, my brethren. That is where money fail. Money do fail. So let me now take you into the ancient Israel. When there was famine in Egypt, and Joseph happens to be their prime minister. They had money. Joseph collected everything for them to have food. There was famine. Collected, they said they should use, they should, they, they, they gave money to the extent that there was no money again. Joseph took all their money. After taking all their land, take, he took everything from them. Still, there was famine. They don't have food to eat. They have to sow their body to, the, to Joseph. And Joseph handed everything to Pharaoh. And that's how Joseph became so famous. Praise the Lord. Because of that intelligence, money do fail, brethren. Everything is not all about money. Turn away from that wicked ways. Whatever that God brings to your hand, spread it. Use that brain to benefit mankind, not only your family. Use it to benefit the human race. You know that there is wickedness that you are doing. Change. Also, you pastors that you are embezzling or you are, you are, you are, you are making your congregation to go bankrupt, repent. Other big ones are repenting now. There is no point. There is no point. There's time of reckoning. And God promised us that there is, there's going to be a time that when you not turn away from that wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven. That is everything that you are going, in your olden days, in your old time when everything is failing, God said he will be there with you. He will heal your, hand, your land. Hello, what else do you want? If your, heart, if your land is healed, then everything around you. Don't you see people that they, they just die peacefully in the hands of their children? Where their children holding the hand, the children holding the house together, the children um, you know, supporting the keeper of the house, which is their arms. The children are there for them to, 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 to make sure that there's no shame. They are surrounded by the children. They even feed them. The hand that cannot feed themselves again, the children are there to. Brethren, the Bible is real. God is real. The word of God 
is life. Brethren, let us, let us follow it and it will profit you. It will profit me and it will profit God. Repentance, it is the key that brings about great joy. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So in the book of Acts 11 as well, it said, when they heard these things, they fell silent and they glorified God, saying, then to the Gentiles also God has granted the repentance that leads to life. God does not in any way limit whatever that is in his possession to anyone. He gave it freely. Freely is given. So no one should surcharge you for anything whatsoever. He granted us that repentance. If we are being granted. It is not, it is not that it, it, um, it is by our doings. So we need to long for it. It is there open. Granting to us does not mean that it's already been given to you. You now have to plug. It's, it's just like you are. It's just like um, I, was, I used to tell some people when we are young, there is this gover tree that is planted everywhere when we are going to school. And then the, the, the owner before, before the, everything became commercialized, you can just pick the one on the floor or it's not a, it's not a big tree. You can just reach out for it and you pluck it, you eat and you go. So it, you have to do something. You have to reach out for it. Even the owner of it have to reach out to pluck it as well. That is something that I can, it's already there. It's been granted, but you need to reach for it by yourself. Praise the Lord. So please, brethren, let us walk our righteousness. Let us walk it out such that the land of your life will be nourished by the mercy of God and everything will be wonderful and splendid that in your old time, according to the book of Ecclesiastes, it will be well with you. Praise the Lord. It will be well, it will be well with you. So therefore, let us use that to exalt, exalt God. Praise the Lord. Exalt God with everything that we bring joy to Almighty God, knowing fully well that he has prepared a place for you and I, that on that day, he said, I will not partake of this communion again with you until that day when you get to my father's mansion. How do you get to that mansion? It is true repentance, brethren. Contrary to those that also refuse to obey the commandment because God commanded repentance, contrary to them that refuse to obey, there is another mansion in hell as well for them. But brethren, it is comfortable to be in heaven than to be in hell. Praise the Lord. It is very, very comfortable to be in heaven than to be in hell. I'm saying, I'm telling you that the repentance that brings eternal life. Praise the Lord. I said in the book of Mark chapter one, say, and saying the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. This is the apostle that are preaching, going all regions of the world. In those days, remember, 12 apostles, they shook the world. By not relenting in their efforts, they moved out to preach the gospel to mankind. Praise the Lord. Correcting the opportunity of all the Gentiles to make heaven. Praise the Lord. They are what? They are preaching repentance such that also the Gentiles can come to the light of this good news. The good news that has come to the world to shine on all of us. 
it is for everyone. Praise the Lord. According to 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 25, says, correcting his opponents with gentleness, God may perhaps grant them repentance, leading to a knowledge of truth. Repentance also leads you to what? To knowledge of the truth. Without repentance, it is difficult to know the truth. It is fighting and claiming to be right that makes someone to dwell in ignorance that makes that leads to foolishness. Hello, we the the, the, the knowledge of truth we correct, we make us to be able to correct one another. You remember the word, what the word is for everyone is to admonish us, to bring us to to teach us also. Praise the Lord. And you would think that this is only in the New Testament or in the, it has been in the time of old as well. Praise the Lord. It has what? Been in times of old. Let us see. For thus said the Lord God, the Holy One of Israel, in returning and rest, you shall be saved. In returning and rest, you shall be saved. In quietness and in trust shall be your strength, but you are unwilling. I pray that you'll be willing today in order to come into the rest of, of God through repentance. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I pray that in the mighty name of Jesus, the spirit of repentance will come upon all our young ones and they will know God. They, the, the ability to yearn for God will engulf your heart and you will find him in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I pray that all of you that long to, to repent will find a true repentance that leads to eternal life in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. That at some point, the disciples, they were making jests of some people that some um, catastrophe happens to. They were, they were making jests of them they were saying, they came to Jesus Christ. Oh, they said that, oh, the world fell on some people. Just, I want to clarify some areas. Praise the Lord. They said that, oh, uh, Lord Jesus, uh, they, they came and said that, oh, this happens to them. The world fell on some people. And Jesus told them that, do not think that those people that the world fell upon, do not think that they are, sin they are sinners or their sin is greater than those in Jerusalem. Hello? So do not judge people in the circumstances or the situation that happens to them, but Jesus Christ was telling us that our own mindset should be focusing on our own repentance, our true repentance that brings us eternal life. It is all about eternal life. He said, those ones that you thought that they were sinners, and you thought that because they were, because it is as a result of sin that a calamity happened to them or the world fell upon them, don't think that it was because of what they have done. He said, some of them are even more righteous than those one in Jerusalem. Praise the Lord. Brethren, I'm going to conclude on this note that the repentance is a gradual process. But you need to take that step of faith. Number one thing you need to do is to try as much as possible to organize yourself, reflect on your actions, everything that you are doing which we start by humbling yourself. Your reflection can only be perfected through humbleness. First of all, humble yourself. Take away arrogance. Take away self-judgment. Everyone are going to be judged accordingly. It is appointed for mankind to die but once, then judgment. 
no one escaped that. So where everyone are going to be judges, we have to work our faith such that when we are judged, we are judged such that we are going to be in eternal heaven and not eternal hell. But eternity is for everyone. That is one of the key things I want you to understand today that the journey of life is endless, is eternal. And when, the, when God already said that there's eternal life, eternal life can be eternal hell or eternal heaven. I pray that we will go to eternal heaven in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. As long as we are yearning to know him and walk in the path of his righteousness, obeying all his command and walking in his status and also performing them, I pray that it shall be well with us. We will not do it in vain. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our prayers shall be answered speedily in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Blessed be to the most high God that has granted us the opportunity to come together to get today again and to learn from one another the truth about repentance. And I pray that it will work for you and work for me, work for my family and work for your family, work for everyone that are going to be listening to this ministry, ministration afterwards in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. God bless you. Have a wonderful Sunday.